Well, hey, friends. Hey, you know, just a little bit ago, I had a, another blogger, or YouTuber, um, tell me that maybe I should do a little bit more blogging about the Philippines and our relationship and stuff. They have a great channel, and they do a great job. So I thought, well, you know, all right, maybe I'll give it a shot. So <laughs> I thought about what have I learned being married to a Filipina for 10 years. So we've been married for 10 years. And uh, there's a lot of things, I guess, that I've learned. There's definitely a lot of things that I've learned, and there's a lot of things that I've had to adapt to. But I, I want to say first, I, I think most importantly, uh, to your benefit, if you're interested in Filipinas, is understand their, their dedication, their devotion to you. Um, I'm going to have to say the biggest thing I came to learn, to experience, and have to accept about our relationship is my wife is truly devoted. She's dedicated. She puts us first. She puts me first. She puts us first. She puts, you know, our well-being first and foremost. That took quite a while to adapt to, to learn how to do that, because that hasn't been the experience in the past with other non-Filipinos, right? Another thing that I've learned that I, I find kind of interesting in you guys is, is my personality type, I'm very laid back. And so if, if the wife wants to buy something, I don't really care, fine, go buy it. But uh, they're always gonna ask you. So you have to get used to the concept of them saying and running things by you all the time. That was a new thing for me when somebody's always saying, hey, you know, I'm thinking, can we buy this, this, and this? Or maybe we should do this, this, this. Always asking for, for input. Not necessarily approval, I want to say, but input, right? So that, that took me back. And, and I had to learn to adapt to letting them be that way and saying, look, you know, you don't have to ask. You can just go and do. But I found it better instead of doing that because I kind of left them in a weird limbo like, do I do it? Do I not do it? Is it really okay if I buy this or if I don't buy it? So instead of leaving them in that unsure limbo because I didn't really care personally, what I found was it was better to go ahead and help them come with a good answer to that. Either give them a yes or no answer or work through the problem or the process or saying what are we going to buy, how are we going to do it, all of those things. So because um, it's important to them to make sure that we're all included, right? And so even with purchasing stuff. So that's something that I learned that I think uh, took me a while to adapt to. But we're in the swing of that now. One of the biggest things that I've learned is to use their own uh, terminology. And here's what I mean by that as an example. You know, they like to use the word in the Philippines a lot, no budget, meaning they don't have the funds or the money to buy a new hat. So there's no budget for a new hat. Well, here in the States, what I would do, or, and when we lived in the Philippines, I would you know, say, well, I would want to explain, well, we don't have enough money in this fund or that account or this, or I hadn't planned for it, or how much is it? Let's kind of work through the, the whole scenario. A whole lot more words than just saying, there's no budget, no budget. So I found it's actually easier just to say no budget. <laughs> they don't ask, what do you mean? Why not? How? What? And why? They understand no budget. So do that. And there's going to be a bunch of other terms that if you can pick up on what they're used to hearing, it's going to save you a lot of effort. And just repeat that back to them. Instead of uh, trying to discuss why we can't or shouldn't buy a new car because of interest rates and payments and all that, just say no budget. It's, it's done with. So that's something that... Uh, I found interesting and have learned. One of the most important things I think I've learned is that we have to make sure they stay integrated into their culture. We have to let them embrace their culture and become part of that culture. Um, that's very important. So, And that's a little bit of a learning curve. A lot of times us, us men want to to bring our foreign wives to America and turn and kind of get them to disavow or disengage with the community. That's the wrong thing to do. Very, very much the wrong thing to do. You're much better off if you continue to embrace the culture and the community, 
Now, as somebody who's only been married once to the current wife I have, who's Filipina, I've, I've had to learn a lot of things about being married. <laughs> and, you know, communication is one. Understanding that uh, what I do individually does affect, you know, the wife, right? Uh, when you're a single guy, you can pretty much just come and go and do whatever you want without any given thought. So when you do get married, you got to kind of learn, oh, wait a minute, it's just not me who's affected. Um, so if I do A, B, C, and D, how does that affect the Y? As a single guy, you know, you never care. So be aware of that. I've learned that. Uh, that took me a while to learn. But I've learned that one, that I, that I got to remember that there's somebody else involved into our, our world, right? Now, here's one of the most important things I think I have learned uh, being married. And maybe this is uh, to anybody, but especially to... Uh, a Filipino, they don't necessarily want me to fix the problem, they just want you to listen. So the, the key is to uh, to just listen and listen and maybe nod your head a little bit, listen and let them vent their frustrations or their issues or problems while you just sit and listen. That's what a good husband I think does. So I've learned that. I've learned all about stinky fish and we have an outdoor system set up for stinky fish. So if you don't know what stinky fish is, Google stinky fish. I think some of the other things I've learned is, is truly to be calmer. I, I, I will say being married to a Filipina, I think makes you a better man and a better human because I think they're better than we are. I think they're better people than we are. <laughs> so, and I believe that when you're around better people, you become better. So there's been all kinds of things that now, you know, after 10 years, I, I look back and go, you know, I'm actually a much nicer guy now than I ever was, uh, which is not a bad thing. I'm more laid back of a guy than I ever was before. I'm more uh, uh, inclusive and thoughtful. So those type of things I've learned being married to a Filipina, and I think those are great benefits to me. One of the number one things, the most important things that I've, I've learned in being married to a Filipina, now I'm gonna say this, my wife is the opposite of this. We have what, they have what they call in the, in the culture Filipino time, which means if the party starts at four, people arrive at five or 5.30, <laughs> which can drive you crazy. My wife is actually not that way. She's very punctual. But since we associate with a lot of Filipinos, and we've been in the Philippines a lot, and we go to a lot of parties and events, Filipino time is in play. So here's one thing that you got to do, and I've had to learn this, is you got to get on board with Filipino time because you're not going to change. And you're not going to change and get everybody on time. It's not going to happen. Uh, it's, it's just not, friends. It's, it's not going to happen. Another really important thing I learned is if you're going to have your wife associating and hanging out with other Filipinos and you do parties and events, you need to make sure that you have a lot of Ziploc bags at home. So when they all come over to eat and they divvy up the leftovers, they like to take them home in Ziploc bags. So make sure you got plenty of Ziploc bags and spoons, a lot of spoons. Uh, those are, are some very helpful, helpful tips for uh, when you guys are having Filipinos over to your house to break bread with your, your wife. And of course, one important thing, another important thing is every Filipina thinks they are the most fabulous karaoke singer in the world. So I encourage you, if you're not into karaoke, finding yourself a safe spot when they karaoke. So that's something I have learned. I've learned to go find a safe spot. I did find it helpful to learn how to cook Filipino food, and so I've, I've actually become very good at that. So that's something that I've learned to do because, you know, my wife works and she works hard and I don't, I'm lazy. And uh, so I'm able to cook some of her food that she likes that she can take to work. The other big thing about food is, look, don't make them eat American food all the time. You know, let them eat their food. And you eat their food too, it's good food. One tip I want to give you, if you're early on in your relationship, a lot of times your wife or your girlfriend may be shy. She may be acting shy. And, and that can be a little frustrating to us guys, right? But here's what you have to understand. They're a little shy because they don't want to impose. 
they don't want to make the decision. So a lot of times they will say, well, whatever you want to do is okay with you. They may look down and they might hide their face a little bit like this and say, you know, and be a little timid when you're talking to them about things. Look, don't worry about that. What they're trying to do, I believe, is show you respect by saying, well, you're the man, you're the head of the household. What is it that you want to do? And we will do it. Because, you know, they're not super picky people. So that's where that comes from. And, and I had to learn that. I had to adjust to, okay, well, my wife is doing this. That means I just need to come up with the answer. Uh, we're going to go to Walmart, and then we're going to go to the movies, and we're going to do that. And they're okay with it. It's like, okay. So that's something to learn. When they're acting a little shy or a little, you know, won't give you a great answer, that's kind of what they mean. They, they mean that they, they're here um, for whatever you want to do. And I'm sure there's lots and lots of other little things that I've learned and experienced. Uh, but let me just say this. After 10 years of marriage, there I would still today marry my wife. And today I'm telling you, if you get the opportunity and if you really are interested in it, you should marry a Filipina. You should do whatever it takes to find the right one for you. Because I truly believe you will not regret it. So go out there, find your own Filipina. If you are already married, tell your wife how much you love her. You guys, you can't miss marrying a Filipina. That's the biggest thing I've learned from 10 years of marriage. Take care, guys. See you soon.